It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at, and I'm here with you. Yes, it's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable once again. And we are surrounded by some really great DJs, as always. And we thank you for tuning in tonight, as well as your watchers on YouTube. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, follow, do everything, and tell another DJ about the show. Plus, also, all the links are down below for everyone's uh, YouTube channel. That's on the show, as well as DJ Billy's uh, podcast. Uh, I put information down there for that. If you want to go check out his podcast, the 192 podcast, uh, I'm on it. A few other people are on DJ Rachel's on, who's been on the show. Uh, and a few other people are on it, too. So make sure you check out his podcast. And as always, we uh, love questions, critiques, criticisms, tomfoolery, comments, anything as such uh, in the comment section and we always love answering questions and uh to going through things and uh wanted to go through some stuff in a little bit for uh some comments from the last show and uh wanted to talk about something that i saw on some social media today uh that someone put up a dj uh out in matt's area in california um talking about it's 150 feet away from a uh, power source to where ceremony is at. They have a sound limit of 70 decibels. Uh, they don't provide any kind of tables, any chairs, any linens or anything like that. Um, and they don't provide certain things. And they're, they're, they give a lot of information. So they, they, you come prepared to the venue. You're not asking for things. And one of the things I, I reading into that, I was looking through that. I didn't see a problem with that 70 decibel uh, sound limit. I've been to venues, uh, a couple of venues that have had that, um, and I have I have a sound meter uh, just to make sure. Once I find from the venue where I need to be at 70 decibels, it's 70 decibels at the street, 70 decibels at the building, 70 decibels, you know, uh, at the property of the person reporting the you know noise. You know, once I find find that out, I can then mitigate that very heavily. Uh, you know, 150 feet away. You know, battery operated stuff, having tables and linens. I have that stuff because I have it on my van. Um, having multiple subs, I had that stuff. I just did this past weekend with three separate subs for a wedding. I did uh, one for a ceremony, one for a cocktail, and one for the actual reception and reception room. So it's it's one of the things that you know I was looking at that. Yeah, there there's some hurdles there, but they're not insurmountable. You know, they're very easy to overcome. And they're very easy to do. You just have to be cognizant of what's going on and look at what is required. So the question for the table, uh, which I sent you guys the uh, list that, that he put onto a picture of it onto uh, social media and let you guys read through that and look through that real quickly. And I wanted to know uh, what you guys thought of that. And uh, if someone came to you with a similar situation um, would you be, would you take the gig or would you say no pass or would you, are you right now, if you, someone said tomorrow you have a gig here and here's the rules, are you prepared to do something like that and do a gig like that? So Matt, this is in your backyard and I'm going to go ahead and go with you first. Cause you were, we were talking a little before the show via, uh, messaging and you said, this is, you know, out in wine country and a lot of vineyards have a lot of unique rules. Um, what do you think? Do you think that you could uh, you would do a wedding like that there? Is this something that you would uh, be in your wheelhouse, easy to overcome, or do you think that you would uh, pass on, or what would you do? Uh, well, I mean, Napa is a weird area. It's way up north, um, wine country, where you know it's uh, people pay a lot of money to live there, so they want the peace and quiet. So I, I kind of get it. Um, it really depends where it's measured at, like. And a lot of times venues will say that, but I've been to venues with noise limits and they really are loosely enforcing them. Um, it's more just if somebody complains, then they have to show that they were within it um, for the event to continue. So I don't really have that issue. Um, if a venue is like crazy with it at like 50 or 55 and it like is measured at the dance floor or whatever, then that wouldn't work for us. But I mean, I've got a couple of venues that that have that and one of which has a really low one. But now they changed the measurement point to from the dance floor. Now it's being measured at the property line, which 
where this where I'm DJing at this place is like way on the other side of the property behind a barn. So there shouldn't be an issue. But um, yeah, some of the it was like the noise thing wasn't that big a deal in there. It was like some of the other rules that are like, you know, if the venue asks you to make announcements, like you have to give them a head, like 15 minute warning and all this other stuff in there that I'm just like, this is ridiculous. Um, like the venue didn't you're not hired by the venue. They're not paying you. So what are you why are you doing all this work for them? um is what it kind of sounded like so i don't know um 70 though is is manageable if it's at the property line yeah and one of the things that i noticed uh was that uh rule that it had there that you had not notify the facility uh, of when you're going to do certain things and i guess because we do it are already tracy and i actually tracy does that side because she does the coordination side uh she's always in constant communication uh, talking to the facility manager um, and finding out, you know, is it sales ready to go or not? Are we, are we on time? Are we going to do this? I, I guess because we're used to that level of communication, that right there didn't wouldn't, didn't bother me. And, you know, I know that, uh, you know, different people do different things. And this is one of the things that, uh, you know, different areas of the country have different ideas. And again, you've been into facilities like this and i i know jeff has been in some facilities indoor and outdoor like we all have been um jeff what about you what do you, do you think about the rules regulations for this facility and what do, would you do would you take it pass it or follow the rules well you know you have to follow the rules if you take the gig um i i look at it as you know i'm hired by the couple if it's a wedding and a venue for something like that um they are aware of the rules. So uh, they're hiring me to entertain their event and they know the rules. So it doesn't matter if uh, the rules are, you can only bring, you know, one, one speaker uh, and, and it's only playing to five people. If that's what they're hiring me to do and the price is right, I'll be glad to do it. So um, it's not that, it's not that big of a deal, you know, um, yeah, uh, Matt's right. It, it depends on where it's measured. You know, 70 decibels at the at the property line depends on where that is. That could be 100 yards away. Uh, you know, it, it varies widely to venue. Um, it doesn't really affect me. Um, the most the the only times I've been affected by it were they've asked me to um, to keep it at a level so that the people in the back of the room uh, could have a loud conversation, you know, obviously not whispering. And, and I'm like, yeah, that's not a problem. You know, my speakers can uh, certainly, you know, pinpoint the dance floor, not a big deal. As far as bringing yeah, battery operated, if you're not um, capable of having a battery operated reception uh, uh, set up, then, you know, you're not seriously into uh, DJing at this point. Um, it's simple as that. You have to have that equipment. Um so yeah, and linens and stuff, I never bring any, I mean, I never ask for that. I bring all my own stuff. I bring my own setup. Uh, as a matter of fact, about half the time I'll show up and I ask them to, uh, yeah, I don't need that uh, six foot table. Can you remove that? You know, put it away. I do not need it. It's just miscommunication. You know, I tell them I'm bringing everything, but they sometimes will still put the table up. Sometimes it's just to show me where to set up and that's fine. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I bring 100% of everything I need, and I usually scope the situation out before I, I arrive to make sure I've got enough extension cord. Uh, I'd love to have two 15 amps. I'd love to have one 20 amp uh, uh, circuit, you know, depending on the setup. So, yeah, it, 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 it's those you should know going in, uh, especially if you've played at a, at a facility before. It's the second or third time around or maybe more, so you know what the setup is. You know, I, I know that uh, my next event, my uh, coming up next week, I've got about 20 feet to go to my uh, to my AC. You know, that's that's a given. So I know exactly what to bring. So, yeah, no, I would take it. Absolutely. Uh, if couples hire me to play music, I play music. Have and fun. That, that's one of the things also is that, uh, you know, I, I feel that in 2023, with all the technology out there, especially uh, Amazon, that you can go on there and get um, a battery-powered system, you know, just to power you. Even if you didn't have a battery speaker and a laptop with a good battery, 
you can buy one of those battery. And again, there's different technology, different chemicals. You don't want to get lithium ion. There's a um, li uh, was it lithium phosphate or whatever. It's a different chemical in the battery, and the batteries are more stable than lithium ion. Uh, I can't remember what it's top of my head, uh, but I will tell you that over in Disc Jockey News, Howie Darkstar did talk does talk about this, and he talked about that technology, and that's someone you can go look at. He's like a pioneer in that area, in that field, uh, with the Howie box and stuff like that. And it, it's 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 one of the things that you know that technology is out there and is proven, and a lot of DJs use it. And now there's more manufacturers, Evolve, Maui, you know, uh, Maui Five on the uh, LD systems. There's you know a lot of these manufacturers. Uh, JBL's got it. Everyone has Bose battery operated speaker that you could put onto either a tripod or have a, a line array that's battery operated and run a ceremony. Like uh, the, like I said before this, the, the wedding way I did this past Saturday, the cocktail hour uh, in what they call the sunroom, which is a basically a, like a greenhouse. It was warm as heck all in there. Uh, my, my speakers weren't plugged in. I was, I, I used my Molly fives in there. They're battery operated. Let's let the batteries you know run and use the battery. So uh, like you said, Jeff, you need to come in prepared and, I'm lucky to have my Sprinter. I know some guys have vans, like, you know, I know DJ Brentley has a van. I know Matt has his trailer. I know you have your SUV, but you come prepared. I know if you have it in totes or you have it in rolling cases or whatever way you prepare, you need to be ready for that kind of stuff because you can go into a facility and like, oh yeah, the the the, the catering company forgot a uh, tablecloth for your table. You can buy tablecloths on Amazon, black tablecloth, very a fitted tablecloth, six foot, eight foot tablecloth, very inexpensively. Um, I bought one a couple weeks ago uh, for a wedding show. It's at the back. It's open on it. So I had the front. I just used this past weekend. It's it's three sides and the back hat comes down like maybe a few inches on the back of a six foot table and it's open. So I put my cart and stuff like that in there, underneath there. That's something to have with you. And it only costs like 20, 20 bucks or 30 bucks. It's not an expensive item. Um, so Dwayne, over there in Ohio, out east, uh, even though you're you're east of me, but to you're to the other people out east, you're west of them. <laughs> um, I know you. Uh, I sent it to you as well. The information about uh, this venue. Uh, what do you think? Do you, do you think this is a feasible thing? Something easy to do, or would you pass on it? Are you would you be prepared right now to go do a, a, an event at this uh, facility? I think I can do the event. I got I got like two, three different kinds of setups. I got the one, you know, my setup when I first started and then I have evolved over the years. So that's taken care of. It's just a matter of either having a, a long enough um, extension cord or I just have to invest in a, one of those uh, Jackery systems. Just pass on the expense on to them. But yeah, I can do it because I have did it. Um, when we are meet and greet for our, our back to school events, when we have it out in the field, there's no outlet. So I use the rental, um, a generator and do it out there. Yeah. That's, that's another thing you can do is, is probably rent a small Honda generator. That's very, very quiet or buy one. I know, uh, um, uh, Harbor Freight, uh, they have, uh, a, a, a knockoff of the Honda, that's actually pretty quiet. Um, uh, there's it's on YouTube. You can go searching for Harbor Freight generators and quiet ones, and they give reviews versus like Honda, and they're they're pretty doggone quiet. Honda is a better unit, but if you wanted to, you know, spend half the price of a Honda, you can buy these at you know at Harbor Freight and have a generator that gives you enough power to cover everything, but still very very quiet and very fuel efficient. Uh, again, it's one more thing to carry. Um, it is one more thing to move. And that's that's part of, you know, doing it. But this gives you an incentive to do it. Um, so, DJ Bradley, uh, I know you can't start us a little later because you were uh, busy with stuff. And I see you're eating. Uh, what did you bring in for the class for food? Today we've got Rudy's Drive-In from Cruise Night. Part of my deal, I get a uh, burger for me and the, or dinner for me and the kid. Plus yep. my cash. But yep. Rudy's. Yep. Oh, Ooh. it's kind of the closest burger to getting like a Chicago greasy spoon or corner diner burger. So I'm all about it. 
I, I wouldn't complain about that then, you know. Uh, now, here's a question. Cheese or no cheese? Oh, definitely cheese. Extra. Oh, see, so you lost me there, man. I, I live up here. <laughs> I live up here. I've got the I cheese know. curds that are fried. I've got my cheese, double my double cheese with extra cheese on it. I, I'm, I'm hook, line, and sinker on this cheese thing. Well, yeah, well, it's Wisconsin. So they, they sell cheese, deep fried yep. in cheese, and then cooked with cheese and covered yep. in cheese. And that's you know, you know that's that's their that's their breakfast. So yeah, I, I oh, guess yeah. you know when it when in Rome, <laughs> and I, I'm all about it. I am. And then Tracy does like to like cheese curds. There's a lot of places down here have cheese curds, including Culver's. And if you have a Culver's near you in the U.S. anywhere, go to a Culver's. There's uh, you can have Wisconsin cheese curds. That's where they're from. Um, yep. so going back going back to the question I said <laughs> while the. Uh, list of requirements for the uh facility out in california uh the question is uh would you take a gig there would you not take a gig there are you prepared today that gig was tomorrow to go there and do the gig tomorrow with everything bring your own tables tablecloths following the rules for sound you know cabling notifying the facility 15 minutes prior to doing something so they know what's going on are you prepared to do all that most definitely prepared to. I mean, when I look at this, I'm assuming they've gotten a bunch of DJs that just didn't do what they were supposed to as the MC DJ because the only venues that I've ever seen anything like this after talking with management there is we've had a bunch of trouble with DJs, so this is how it has to be. Now, so, you know, like you're saying, a battery-powered setup – I've been using a Halo Bolt and a Mackie 12 for going on four years now. And I swear by it. I'm not trying to push it super hard. It's not meant to be a reception speaker by any means. But if it's loud enough to be my floor monitor melting my face at a wedding, I'm, you know, during the reception, because that's what it will turn into later in the night, it's more than adequate to do exactly what I need to do on a ceremony. And I've, you know, with my wireless mics and that, that's all I'm running off of it. I've never run into an instance where my iPad runs out of power doing a ceremony. So I'm not really worried about that. But, you know, seeing, okay, the decibels, that's a buzzkill right out the gate. And I would question doing it from the start there. But I'm sorry. Uh, the thing about music where it has to be legal and a, uh, where is it? Professional format of music without demeaning, vulgar, or obscene music. I can't tell you the last time I played a wedding where I didn't play Get Low. <coughs> <coughs> and in the past month, somehow, WAP has made a resurgence where it's on every must playlist I'm getting. So right out the gate, I know I'm not the right DJ to show up at this venue. Could I pull it off? Yeah, but would I follow that rule? Probably not. And I know I recently didn't find out about this, you know, their rule about vulgar music one day until I showed up at a venue about, it was a month and a half ago. Now. And I'm like, really? Uh, I'll try my best, but what the bride and groom have given me, there's stuff on here you probably wouldn't want me playing. So if I can skirt around it, I will. If not, it's too bad, so sad. And once she said, why haven't you played WAP yet? I'm like, all right, here we go. Let's do this. And I was getting glares from the manager the entire night after that. I'm like, sorry, I'm doing what the couple contracted me to do. If I'd known this two weeks prior to me showing up, when I asked you uh, on my advance call, any weird rules or rules I should be concerned with, anything I need to know about my load-in, all of that. And they were like, no, you have more than adequate power. You have four drops behind you in case you have a big light show. They gave me everything but that and yeah i just that's the only thing i really didn't follow and i've been to other venues where they have a little red light and rules like this where if you go over 65 decibels 50 feet away from the tent the red light goes off not only by you but by them and they come talk to you so i learned real quick i'm like okay and I kind of figured out where I had to keep it. And it definitely was a party killer. Bride and groom were like 9 o'clock. You know what? We're done. 
we just want to go home. This venue hasn't been very accommodating. Blah, and I could see the venue was really s- strict in a lot of ways, but lax on some things you think they would be strict about. And they also got it. I mean, I get that the bride and groom's friends were all drinking in their cars and about six people got asked to leave because they weren't buying booze at the venue. Okay, I get that. But at the same time, you know, maybe say like, here, get it. You know, we're not going to throw you out, but stop. It was one shot done and it was click, 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 click. So it kind of got really very difficult to be there for everyone. So nine o'clock, we were done. I understand a lot of times with facilities, especially drinking, liquor license, they vary from state to state, jurisdiction, jurisdiction, uh, how the liquor license is. Like here in Illinois, we can't have shots at a wedding because if you have an open bar, it's illegal in Illinois to have shots. So like facilities don't want you to play the song shots from LFAO. Um, so it, really, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's. They so can they can drink whatever they want here. Yeah, here shots. Now they have a paid bar. It's a cash bar, or like a facility we're at this past week and the past Sunday, uh, which is a distillery, wine, uh, distillery and brewery. It's oldest one in Illinois, uh, Thornton uh, Distillery, um, and they actually have their bourbon and a couple other distilled spirits in stores. Uh, here in the Chicago area, uh, they have a bar downstairs and restaurant, and they have a, 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 a award winning chef. And they were saying that you know during the wedding they'll keep the restaurant open downstairs, and people can come in to the, the bar downstairs to keep people downstairs. You know, middle them upstairs where the reception's at. But if someone comes downstairs and wants shots, or the groom wants to go downstairs, they can go on downstairs and order shots downstairs and have them downstairs to come back upstairs. So that right there is kind of cool. But Illinois, they do not allow shots at an open bar you know that's what you can have you can have it in a glass you know regular glass on ice you can have it in a mixed drink you can have you can have drinks you know they they, they pour you they give you jaeger but they give you jaeger on ice uh, in a regular cup you know and they want to mix it with something else so you can have jaeger and coke or something like that and again it's just a way to stay the is but again every jurisdiction is different so again i can understand you know someone wants to protect their uh their their license and far as not playing foul language, I just did a very heavy Christian wedding two weeks ago. You know, a lot of stuff right there. I was very careful on the songs because I'm cognizant of the customer and making sure that I cover and make sure I do not do anything that's offensive. And I never play anything with foul language like WAP. I would never play because I would feel that's offensive of a song. But with foul language, you know, radio edit stuff, a lot of times like wobble and stuff like that. Okay. I have a re- clean radio edit version, just like, you know, get low. I have the radio clean edit version of it. So a lot of stuff is cut out. A lot of stuff is not there. It is still kind of dirty. Yeah, it is. But again, depending on the clientele. And to me, the client also should know going into a facility that this is the requirement. This is what they're going to do. But can you still rock out the dance floor? Sure. And it, it, that's that's also playing with the sounds of that. Uh, Adrian E., would we, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, would we warn future clients for certain facilities with those uh, ramifications? I would say, yeah, that would, if you know a facility that has those rules and a client contact, oh, pretty, that's cool. Um, she is an exactly. artist like her dad. Uh, I would definitely would say, yeah, I would definitely would tell a client, hey, are you aware of, there's certain places I, I talk when, I, when a client calls me and talks to me about that facility, I turn to them and go, okay, are you aware of X, Y, Z? We've been there before, and this is the requirements for this. So are you aware of it? So you know what we're going to have to do, what we're going to have to charge either an extra fee or bring an employee in or do whatever for this reasons. Because we've been there enough. We know the facility. And that again, that, that also showed your depth of knowledge of the facility too. So I definitely would make sure I partner with the couple uh, or the, the customer, if they're a corporation, whatever, and they know what's going on, what's happening, and what's transpiring, and no one uh, gets in trouble. Uh, Jeff, what about you? Do you feel, would you warn a customer that, or talk to a customer about a facility with restrictions that you know of? Do you talk to customers and talk to them about their facility? Yeah, I mean, you know, if they're hiring me uh, at a facility and they, they are aware of any restrictions, then, um, uh, you know, they should be aware if they're hiring me, then, uh, you know, and I need to be aware too. 
Um, but as far as, you know, language goes, all of my, all of my music is clean. Uh, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, anything that, that is, uh, explicit is marked in red. Uh, so I, I know not to play that at any mixed company or, you know, in, anywhere that it doesn't need to be, um, you know, even WAP, you know, I've got the clean version of that. I don't know how clean that is, especially the video. Uh, there's, you know, I did get one complaint one time because, you know, I play videos, uh, music videos, uh, and someone not did not complain to me, but did complain after the fact, um, like months later, that they didn't like the fact that I was uh, playing a video with twerking. And the per the person that told me that sh she was like, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, these these people, the people that complained, have no clue. You know, they, they uh they they're the type that would complain about anything and everything. So she's like, just be aware of that. So I'm like, yeah, it's good to know. Um, you know, if if uh in the future I, I will make sure that the, if there's a video with twerking in it for this event or an event like it then I'll just play the MP3 and skip the uh, video. Not a big deal. So, um, but yeah, I, I would, you know, definitely go over the restrictions with the couple or the people that are hiring me and make sure that uh, we're on the same page. And as far as a uh, playlist goes, um, you know, uh, I, I think, you know, for weddings, it's pretty, it's pretty clear what is to be played. So that uh, really you know, if the if the uh, venue has a problem with it, then I would say, well, you need to go talk to the couple because they have asked me to play this song and I am doing their bidding because they are paying me. Uh, if you have a problem with it, talk to the couple. So that's where I would throw it. But I mean, and, but then again, you don't want to throw it to the couple in the middle of their you know biggest night of their lives. Uh, so maybe I would wait until after, you know, the event is over to uh, throw it back onto the couple. But, um, you know, during the, during the event, you, you never want to put any pressure, undue pressure on a couple. So but yeah, I mean, it's basically the first thing I would probably tell a venue operator is this is what I've been requested to play. And I'm going to play that request because they're paying me to play that request. Well, again, like for you, they're, they're sending this information out to you prior to uh, the event day. Because a lot of times, again, I, I, I'm i sure we all have run into, um, we've run into uh, venues that send you uh, requirements or they say, oh, hey, you know, uh, you got to do this, do that, uh, you know, prior to. And you're like, hey, I got to tell the, the, the client just to let you know, I need to do this, 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 this. Or are you aware of the fact of, I'm required to do this, but uh, I would say, you'll know, get future clients who contact us via whoever, via through our website, through a knot or whatever. I definitely would say, Oh, I'm having my wedding at uh, Morton Arboretum. Okay. That's three setups. Did you know that? Cause it's, you know, one step for ceremony, one step for cocktail, one step for reception, stuff like that. You, you know, your depth of a facility or you do research in the facility after they come to you. Um, and you're like, Oh yeah, there's, there's, there's no elevator here and you want me to bring equipment up on the second floor? No, I'm sorry. I'm not the person you want then, you know, something like that. You, you, you can talk to a client and find information. Out. Matt, what about you? Do you, would you uh, notify a customer that, you know, if you get a facility that they're contacting you about and you know, they have some unique rules or regulations or unique work you have to do. Do you, do you talk to your clients about that, educate them, on the facility that they've chosen mm -hmm. and explain to them, this is the reason why I'm doing X, Y, Z, or I need to charge you extra because of whatever, or, Hey, did you, are you aware of a sound restriction or a time restriction or something like that? Do you, do you talk to your clients about that? Um, sometimes, um, I'm also just really money hungry. So a lot of times I'll just bite it and just not say anything but what i will do is like charge a little extra for said venues because i know almost every venue now um not almost every but i know which ones are problematic so for those i will just send them what i call my uh peak premium pricing uh triple p's and it's like 500 bucks more than normal <laughs> so um so for those then yeah i mean if they want to pay that sure i'll deal with uh, usually it's because it's a difficult load in um, or 
there's uh, if it's if it's a noise ordinance to the point where I don't think I could give the performance that I'm looking for, I won't even take it. I'll just say, you know, hey, we've had issues at this venue in the past with the noise ordinance. For, I, I won't say that. I'll just say we're unavailable usually. Um, but um, we'll just kind of sub it out to one of my guys that doesn't use subs and doesn't play as loud. But um, yeah, I don't I, I've never like what sucks is like they'll book a package without checking the rules of their venue first. And then like I have in my contract that they can't remove things. They can substitute things, but the value of the contract does never go down. So um, they're kind of, you know, out of luck if uh, they can't do this and they don't want to substitute it for something. So um, I, it's on, it's their responsibility to find out what's permitted and what's not. Um, I just follow whatever rules the venue tells me. All right. And then uh, I'm going to ask uh, Dwayne, what about you? Do you, if you know a facility that has unique rules or regulations or a difficult setup or a difficult load in and load out, you need to charge an extra fee because you need to bring an employee in or, you know, hire a friend or, you know, uh, or you need to have extra, you, you know, you need 300 feet of whatever to get to somewhere. Uh, do you, do you talk to your customers, educate your customers on the needs that you have and about the facility they chose and that the reason why you have to do certain things? Uh, yeah, and I have, but then a lot of times I got clients that want to do it their own way still, even after I've told them what the issues is with the um, venue. So it's like, sometimes I get like, I'm stuck in the middle. Cause I'm, I know the manager is saying one thing and I'm saying that to the um, client. And they still want to have have it their way, but I tell them ahead of time. I just do what I, I just do my best. And then, um, if a client you know says, "Hey, um, I don't care," just go ahead and do it. Uh, of course, you know you're going to do it. But if a client says, "No, I don't want that," uh, what happens then? Do you talk to a client and say, "Hey, uh, Mister or Mrs. Client, you may not want that, but..." You know, the facility requires it or a facility it recommends this or I need to do it to make sure your event is successful. Um, and they don't want to they don't want you to do it They're like, no, no, don't do it. Don't worry about it. What happens then if, if you know, the, the you go back to the client and go, well, you're telling me it's OK, but the facilities tell me, no, who do you you know, who do you upset more? Do you upset the client more or the, or the facility? I, I don't want to upset either one. So that's one of the things I, I always think people mm -hmm. work out. And you said that, you know, you talk to people about stuff. Uh, have you run into that before that, uh, you know, you you try to please both sides? Yep, I have. But then it got to the issue where the manager kept um, coming to me saying that we do it by this time, that time and all that. So eventually I just said, just told him, there's the client. You all need to talk. And then mm -hmm. <laughs> step back. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's better to let, like, you know what? You need to talk to this person here because they're my boss and I want to make you happy too. And there you go. Uh, I know uh, up in Wisconsin, uh, DJ Brentley, he has a lot of unique places, including I saw on social media a barn that had some very unique electrical um, uh, connections, to say the least. It looked like a um, four or five fingers hanging down. They were each one was an extension <laughs> cord uh, plugged into uh, Ooh, yeah. Bob's uh, uh, circuit box, which probably didn't have uh, circuit breakers. It probably had rigor screw and fuses, which I could tell you my parents' house up until 2001, 2002, uh, when they redid the electrical, redid the whole electrical system. My parents had screw and fuses. And I think that electrical box there had screw and fuses. So that's, that goes back to like, you know, early, early electrical stuff. This is like, you know, bare wire electrical stuff. And yeah. the pictures I saw there of that was really, really scary. So when you have something like that you run into, do you inform the clients that, hey, you know, I need to do certain things for a venue like that? Do you explain to them how unique the venue is or unique rules or, or policies? And do you explain to them why you need to do stuff or charge for it um, when they come to you? Or what do you do? It depends. Honestly, the la like the venue you saw the pictures I'd sent from, it wasn't in that condition the last time I'd been there, which was like three and a half, four years ago. 
there were more power outlets. And what I think happened is certain things died or certain lines, you know, started going and they just tore them off, capped them and said, we're done. We're not putting these back out because people are being stupid or something like that. Because there, that power source wasn't there before. And I think that was just temporary. Like somebody installed it, you know, or put it in there so they could have food there now. But yeah, I wasn't excited about that. And when it comes to venues like that, more and more, like I've gotten one in my inbox right now. It's a venue I prefer not to do. And I'm only if I'm only going to pitch them my premium package, and that's it. So if I'm going to be there, at least I'm not completely wanting to kick myself in the butt for it. But there are some venues I'm just – I'm not willing to subject myself to anymore. And with that, I've had a couple clients actually move venues because of, like, mid-season rule changes. And there was one that I was actually kind of really liking except for their load-in. The worst load in of all time, like three feet wide, maybe by four feet deep. Took me six trips to get everything up and down because you couldn't overload the elevator or it would get stuck, as we were told. So it was like two subwoofers. That's it. Let's go downstairs and, you know, meet that down there because you couldn't fit in there unless you stood on top of your subs. So the load in was off. But then they decided that it was the DJ's fault. Their staff had to stay late beyond one them after a, a reception when it takes you 40 minutes just to get your stuff in and out of the elevator. So they impose that a new rule that every, instead of start ending at midnight, you have to end at 11 o'clock. And a lot of couples were, had already signed. So two of my couples that I talked about, they're like, we found out we're getting a new venue and we all went to celebrations. It was great. So there's a lot of that. But when, I'm getting approached about something. I'm anything that could lead to me to have a bad review or put out a bad show for my client in any way, shape, or form. I'm just avoiding like the plague now. I don't want to sound like a prima donna with it, but if I know I can't walk into the venue and give you my best because the venue will tie me, you know, tie my hands behind my back, I'm not going to do it. I just won't. I would rather you know, do an all day outdoor barn that where everything works, you know, accordingly, it goes how it's supposed to and have to deal with a, you know, a premier venue that has a list of rules that they have to give you, including like the musical selection and all that. I mean, for, and it, it's happening. I'll say 80, 90% of my weddings are telling me to play exactly what I play downtown here in La Crosse or in the clubs I'm at around the state. And they want, and I'm very clear, so you want dirty versions, yeah? Okay. And what we will do from that point is we'll make out a game plan, like, as soon as you, I'll give your, you know, everybody over 50 an hour. Once that hour goes, you're going to hear wobble, then you're going to hear yeah. It should be enough to get the people over 50, like, it's time to go. Because most people aren't doing tosses, you know, bouquet, garter, and all that. So I kind of use that first hour, I will... I will drop a slow song at the end of that first hour to 90 minutes, play wobble, play yeah, and I turn, then I'm going to 125 beats a minute or higher for as long as I can push them. I mean, I may drop back a few times for the sing-along stuff, but I'm pushing as hard as I can at that point. And if I, you know, dirty versions, dirty segues, if you're telling me to play dirty versions and do what I do downtown or at clubs, you're getting just that. It's going to have, you know, Every the f bomb, it's going to come up, and like I said, I've been getting a big call from that to do that and play the dirty versions as soon as you know it's appropriate or prudent to do so, and forget everything else. So if a venue's going to tell me, I'll, I'll be like, "Look, you need to talk to the couple," or I'll talk to the couple and be like, "You're not supposed to do this here. What do you want to do?" And more often than not, like the gig I said on it was in July, I just said, "You know what? Heck with it." I'm probably not going to come back here because of X, Y, and Z issues already. Here's your dirty versions. Let's go. And I didn't hold back. I From WAP to What's Your Fantasy to uh, My Neck, My Back, and the entire list of dirty, dirty songs she gave me, I just went with it. And I know, luckily, I didn't get a bad review from the venue on my page, but I know the venue wasn't pleased. So... I'm just going to do what they tell me, bottom line.
Okay. And I know you said your worst ever was a three foot by four foot deep load in with an elevator that was uh, couldn't overload. So I, I asked the rest of the <coughs> room uh, here and the rest of the table. Uh, I, I got to hear your horror story for your worst load in. And I'm going to start with Jeff. Uh, I know, again, you do school events, you do weddings, you do corporate events, you do all these different events at these different venues. And I'm sure 99.9% of them are, you know, decent load ins or not nothing horrible or crazy. But what is, do you remember your worst ever load in over the years you've been doing this? Uh, there's a, there's a couple that were pretty bad. Um, the, the one that I, um, I don't like doing, but I'll, I'll take it anyhow. But, um, but yeah, it is, uh, uh it, it's up on a field, um, which is not bad. I can drive my vehicle up there and unload, but I have to run 225 feet of, uh, 12 gauge cable to, uh, to get power up there. And that is a pain. Um, and then the, the bad thing about that also is the plug that I'm plugging into is in a trailer, you know, it's a school trailer and the plug in there is so ratty. I mean, it's, I usually take duct tape and tape it over so it won't, you know, fall out. It is so loose. So, uh, that one I don't like, uh, because of the, the cable run. Um, but, yeah, I haven't had any, you know, really bad experiences with elevators, you know, in this area. We don't have a whole lot of high-rise venues, so uh, lucky about that. Uh, most barn weddings are, uh, you know, you can usually pull up pretty close. Um, though I do have one coming up in October where the ceremony is going to be probably a quarter mile from the barn and oh. totally totally battery operated so it's it's going to be a haul getting from there well not just for me but all the guests are getting from the ceremony walking all the way back over to the barn so that's going are, to be, are uh, they running it like a shuttle or they have like a a, a a really long uh golf cart or a not that i'm aware of not that okay. i'm aware of those who are uh handicapped or maybe in a wheelchair or you know have trouble walking i'm sure they will uh, allow them to, you know, ride in a vehicle of some sort. Uh, maybe they'll have a golf cart, but uh, I'm not expecting it. So I'm going in with my mindset that, yeah, I'm just going to be, uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty light setup for my uh, ceremony gig, uh, ceremony uh, rig. It's going to be, uh, you know, it'll be one trip with both arms full, but it'll be one trip. I've run into uh, a couple of facilities at, uh, I, I, I have a bad knee, so I can't really walk far distances. Um, and I'm not going to push a cart. I'm not going to have Tracy push a cart. So it's, I know a facility that, you know, has got distance. You have, a, you have a golf cart. You have someone who could transport me and equipment to where it's at. So it's one of the things that it's, it's us asking questions you know, before way beforehand, so we know exactly what we're doing, or can we pull our vehicle up? And it, again, it's talking and communicating with the facility, but yeah, that's that's bad with a rally. Yeah, I do, parkour. I do remember one, one, one thing that I, I hate more than anything is trying to push my uh, cart loaded down with subs and speakers over gravel. Yes. I it just can't be done. I don't know who whoever uh, anybody in this board on this uh, room has ever had to push over gravel. It is the worst. And it's almost impossible, depending on how loose the gravel is. The the one thing I did, uh, the carts I have, um, I have the off road version of the carts, so they have bigger, wider tires. They're harder to push than the small tires on regular, like uh, Saturday. Um, I had I was trying to push the cart, it wouldn't go. So I, uh, our employee. Uh, he grabbed the front. I'm like, just pull the front real quick. Okay, you're going to pull the front. I'm going to push the back. So I was pushing. He was pulling. Yeah, help me steer just because the wheels are wider and over. Uh, it was uh, cobblestone uh, for the entrance area where we unloaded the van at. And it's like, okay, once we got inside, I was able to push no problem. But until I got to like the concrete to go in, it was like, oh, God, okay, I need I need an extra hand. So that's, that's the sucky part. So, Matt, I want to hear your worst nightmare load in i know uh jeff said he had the the one facility with the uh uh outlet that's uh worn out that you go plug a uh outlet a plug in and it wants to fall back out and got used you know 
gaffer tape or duct tape to hold in? What, what's what's your uh, what's your nightmare? Well, Jeff's got nothing on me. Um, there's there's too many to name, but uh, I'll go with one in particular. Uh, the San Diego, not the zoo. There's a safari park, which is not in San Diego. It's in Escondido, which is about 20, 30 minutes north of San Diego. So um, they do not allow vehicles on the property, um, like on the grounds of the actual zoo, whatever. But the event space is like right in the middle overlooking the safari enclosure. I don't know. It's like some, it, it overlooks like the plains. So think of all the like rhinos and other things that graze the plains out there, giraffes and stuff. So obviously you can't drive a vehicle there. There's a path there and there's a parking lot by the event space. Uh, it's tiny. Those only like room for three or four cars and they won't let you bring your vehicle there. So you have to arrive to their lower parking lot for where vendors park they have a small cargo van and not a not a ford transit mass like 250 or a pro master it's a like a city like a ford city van like the little tiny one size of a scion and they take you and your gear and drive it all to wherever that space is then you unload it if you got to take multiple trips they come back do that you know a bunch of times and yeah that that was probably the worst load in um, because it was just like, it took so long because it took us two trips and I have two people with me. So uh, how do I get them up there also? And then at the end of the night, we had to wait two and a half, half hours because there was another wedding going on. So we have all of our gear done and packed up and the photographers too had to do the same thing. So they're waiting for a ride. We're waiting for a ride. There's one van, three event spaces, all having weddings at the same day. Like it's ridiculous. So uh, that's one place I just, I don't think I'll ever be back. Um, and then another one of note is, I think I mentioned it before, the, if you ever play Grand Theft Auto, the, the U.S. Bank Tower in downtown L.A., the one that's the tallest building that you jump off of with the parachute, uh, we did a prom there that was on like the 60-something floor. It was a big event space up there. And you would think a big building like that would have a huge loading area. No, it's just a tiny little pull-in, really steep ramp, uh, and a truck dock. And so you go up the ramp, go in the first elevator, go up to the 52nd floor, then transfer to another elevator, go up to the 60 whatever floor, get out, round a corner, and then you're in the venue. Um, so that was that was also not fun. And the elevator is like, it's tall enough for 10 foot truss, but like it's it's not it's not a proper loading elevator like when you'd see at a convention center. So it's not fun. So Dwayne, what about you? What's your worst load in? I have to say the uh, my fortieth um, birthday party I did um, at okay. a pizza um, pizza uh, ria place, and it was like the pizza place is at the top, and then you got and it's right at eight o'clock when you have all the college students there. I had to park in the parking lot, so I had to take. I couldn't really roll my stuff in like I normally do, and I had to go downstairs to the where the party was. So basically trying to carry stuff and then maneuver around the customers there. That was the hardest part. Other than that, I've been fortunate to be able just to put everything on my dolly and roll it in. Carts are, or carts are nice to have, but if you, with stairs, it's always more difficult. So Adrian E says, uh, he said, hmm, that I think the worst venue to load in our downtown venues at old skyscraper, which is very true. I've done that before. And here in Chicago, a lot of skyscrapers, uh, a lot of the buildings downtown Chicago, they have union uh, el operators for the elevators and they have union personnel running stuff, which is no big deal. Great guys, fun guys to work with, very professional. But if they're not available, they're on break, they're on something, no one else can run those elevators and run that stuff. So one of the venues I had to deal with, kind of similar to him, um, and he had, he was running the problems with it being shared with multiple services, other weddings, DJs, caters, sanitation, decor, and uh, would take forever to load in and out of a facility. I had to wait. Uh, so this was, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the building, what building it was, but it was in uh, River North in the downtown Chicago. Um it the the elevator load in they have an outdoor like door right off the sidewalk to load in it, look, it looks like a garage door it's it's the elevator so i unloaded everything uh, i actually had my baby brother 
take my vehicle and go ahead and and, and drive off with it because Tracy was busy. Tracy wasn't uh, wasn't uh, able to come with me, so I went to go do this by myself. I'm like, okay, uh, I hated that. That was the worst time ever I did it by myself. I had my big brother help me, which which was fantastic. So he went to go park my van uh, at the time. I had my Chevy van. So this is uh, going back a few, many years. Uh, he went to go park the van and then uh, he came back and I had on, uh, I had on my cart, I had my two JBL PRX. I had my, um, uh, my rock, my um, uh, Yorkville sub. I had uh, my control, my uh, CDJs, all this stuff, computer, everything on two carts sitting there on a sidewalk in downtown Chicago, waiting for the elevator to come down. I'm, I ring the bell, says ring bell for elevator, ring the bell, ring the bell. Finally, a maintenance guy comes out of a side door. He goes, oh yeah, the, the elevator guy's on lunch right now. He'll be back in a little bit. So I, he, my brother parked three, four blocks away, comes walking down the street. He goes, why aren't you in? I go, I'm waiting for the elevator guy. He goes, oh, okay. And my brother, you know, he's he's a union guy and he, you know, he does stuff. And he's like, Yeah, that's the thing. Downtown Chicago, a lot of the buildings, you know, they people do certain things and that's their job. And no one, you know, no one else can do that job. So we waited around, had a wait, and then find the guy who comes, he, you know, he apologized. I'm like, yeah, no big deal. Get in there. Again, real nice guy, very professional. Get in there, get unloaded, load out, start, you know, suit set up. At the end of the night, come back. Uh, to the elevator and you know he was still there and he's like okay well he's like you know i can get you out right now or you gotta wait about a half hour because there's another event going on upstairs and i gotta take stuff down I'm like no no we'll get everything out now get to the elevator get everything out and then get out on the sidewalk when i got on the sidewalk get everything all out uh the other he was bringing stuff down for the other event and uh yeah we had a big pile of equipment from different, you know, not just DJs, but also like, you know, uh, vet, you know, event, you know, uh, lights and all this other stuff and uh, tables and whatnot uh, from the other event. And yeah, we had a big, covered half the sidewalk outside. And, you know, my brother went to go get the van, come back. And it was, uh, it, w it was very long day just sitting there waiting for one elevator. And that's the bad part of a facility like that. That's one of the many reasons why I avoid going downtown Chicago. The parking's horrible. Uh, it, it's hard to get in and out of buildings downtown Chicago because they've limited access and so forth and so on. I, again, the people, the staff there are always wonderful and great. I always they, I, I always run into great, fantastic people. But it is a more difficult thing to, to do. A um, couple other things we're going to run to real quickly from the last uh, DJ roundtable. I want to uh, call out a few things people said. Um, DJ Mikey Mike said EV and QSC are the two brands in a DJ universe. And I did do a reply to that. And I said, well, you know, I think uh, JB, RCF and a few others will be on the short list for DJ sound systems. I know, uh, Matt, he is uh, certain brands that he's not a fan for and certain brands. He does love, um, and also Matt is just got a phone call from a customer. So, <laughs> Uh, I'll be but again, here, but I, I'll start. no problem. Uh, let's see here. Got to go to the, the loop. Le oh, I got to go loop to left to the left to the left for the late DJ Jimmy Spin. Uh, DJ Jimmy Spinner, he did uh, tell me a story that he did that on uh, uh, on the uh, Cha Cha slide that uh, he looped left to the left to the left and people just walked to the wall. Uh, he was he was a great man and Unfortunately, we lost a great DJ um, a couple of years ago. Um, with that said, uh, I think uh, DJs only do. Oh, okay. Well, he was talking. Uh, DJ uh, Aga was talking about uh, how you know two different brands of of subwoofers were talking about. And he said the only people would notice that would be uh, DJs. And then he hides his EV eighteen under the table uh, facade and would have to put. Two subs in front. Um, uh, he's not looking to uh, uh, balance with the same brand, so he, th he thinks the only reason uh, why he would uh, add a Mac 18 was to get extra boom and extra hit. So, 
Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, here's a question from DJ Mikey Mike. Do any of you guys play the Curly Shuffle? That is a good old one. Oh, yeah. I, I, I played it a few times, the Curly Shuffle. Yeah, Jeff's done it. I've done it. <laughs> Matt's probably like, what? The what? What shuffle? <laughs> uh, you know the three the stages? The heck is a curly, curly shuffle. Yep. The three oh, I know the song, curly. but get me to play that, you're out of your mind. Oh, I guess I I'm out of my mind. My <laughs> I won't play it. I right, wouldn't play it. Oh, come on. But you wear a cape, though. <laughs> Yeah, I wear a cape. I totally You're Superman. do. You always look good, something though. like that. <laughs> and again, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, some of the uh, pictures on social media with uh, DJ Brantley with his, when he's standing, it just with a scrim looks looks like he's got a cape behind him. It always looks good. He's always standing there, looking very powerful, like he's going to kick some rear end, and he does. You know, he again, he's got tons of customers that will say that he's a great DJ and he, he is truly a Superman up there in Wisconsin. And we all have supermen here and we have some, some super women that come on here, other DJs that uh, do stuff. So if you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you smash the like button, follow the show, make sure you uh, also do uh, other things like say something down below and follow everyone else here. And Adrian, Adrian, he says a new line dance called winkle, winkle or wink, wink. Wink, wink, W I N K W I N K, wink, wink. Which, yeah, we were at. We we're talking about that last night uh, on social media um, about a new line dance. I'm, I'm glad you told me it's a uh, wink, wink. I gotta look that up. It was something that uh, I guess at, uh, DJ X, a couple guys saw, and we were talking about it. So uh, something else to look forward to. Um, and then uh, DJ Mikey Mike also said for you, Matt. Wow, dual twenty one subs. How large is your venue you play at? Um, uh, I think Matt just plays that at any chance he can in a decent size amount of people. So uh, I don't think he wants to blow out uh, people's ears, but uh, you know Matt will. Uh, he he likes to have in his uh, good base. Uh, curly shuffle, yep, the curly shuffle. Uh, Adrian knows it. DJ Adrian E. He knows the curly shuffle. So yep, I played it. Jeff's done it. Uh, Brentley won't. Matt doesn't know what it is. Uh, Dwayne, Curly Shuffle, yes or no, real quick? I never heard it. Never heard? Oh, <laughs> look it up, man. Look up my brother. You know, you will, uh, it is a good so one. It is a Curly Shuffle on YouTube. It'll, uh, it'll pop up. Yep. Yep. The music video has, uh, it's all cuts of Three Stooges and Curly. So it's awesome, awesome thing to have. An awesome music video to play at, uh, at an event, especially at a wedding, it's especially you get a little bit a crowd, you know, the the 40 plus crowd. They're like, Yeah, three stooges, yes. And you can see people doing three stooges stuff, poking people, you know, in the head and stuff like that, like you know, acting a lot like the three stooges. I've done that a few times. It's 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 fun. So with that being done, and now we're our over an hour, but I'm gonna say good night to everyone here. So uh I want to thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for putting up with us and uh, going through everything and, uh, you know, enjoying our our family here of friends and all these great DJs here. And thank you for watching it. It makes us, you know, do what we do here. Again, comics, critiques, criticism, comfortery. Put it down below. We want to hear what you guys, you know, questions you guys have. I want to hear what your thought is on everything. And other than that, we'll see you guys again. Thank you so much.